In this final part of the introduction, I would now like to show you some statistics about the discrete element method. For doing that, I have searched for this keyword, discrete element method on Scopus, and found more than 603,000 publications since 1985. Most of that publications were related to the discipline of engineering, 23%, 14% to mathematics, 12% to computer science, and last but not least, 10% to physics and astronomy, astronomy, as well as many other fields, as you can see here. So, this statistical image shows us that the discrete element method is mainly used in engineering and applications, but also mathematics and computer science is very interested in that method, for example, to improve the numerics behind the scenes. Also, I've tried to make a comparison with other disciplines. Here you see the growth of publications per year. So these are really the publications per year. So they are steadily increasing. And in the year 2022, we had approximately 16,000 publications dealing with the discrete element method. We can now compare this to other disciplines, for example, weather simulation, the field of granular flow, or the famous rocket science. So you can see here the discrete element method is even more important than rocket science, and it has a similar standing as weather simulation. Of course, there are other disciplines like quantum mechanics, plasma physics, and you see the increase of publications here. You see a big boom around 1995 but if you look at the last two decades essentially you see that this uh, increase of publications per year for these very fancy two topics has essentially also uh, leveled down a bit and is similar to what you see for the discrete element method having said that i would like now to hand over to experts and ask them about their opinion related to the discrete element method for about 20 years, the discrete element method has proven to be indispensable for research in the field of granular and powder flows. I would say, uh, especially nowadays, uh, everyone is talking about digital twins or virtual twins. So it's definitely about uh, the possibility to simulate something in the computer uh, that is um, a real-world process. Yeah, we get a very deep insight into the particle-particle collisions and especially uh, during sintering the thermal behavior will influence the whole structure. So DEM is useful to understand when bulk material stops flowing and misbehaves. The important industries would be food, pharmaceuticals, and mineral processing. It has proven to be an invaluable tool for understanding these complex systems, for example, in the blending or mixing of powders in the pharmaceutical industry, where very high mixing qualities need to be achieved. Yeah, DM is a tool, a powerful tool, which really allows us to look into real world coders. Um, and as, for, as far as academia goes, of course, uh, academia should be on the forefront of this development as well. So um, basically for academia, it's also of utmost importance to deliver uh, new functionalities, new ideas. EM is an important aid for research on particle systems, like particle technology or soil mechanics as it complements other techniques and gives us access to details otherwise invisible. And finally, the virtual prototype can be exposed to loads and conditions that are otherwise very difficult to reach experimentally. I'm an experimental physicist and I'm fascinated by the flow behavior of granular materials. Think of sand, 
rice, but also adhesive powders such as you find in your printer. I also know very well that my experiments cannot reveal every single potentially microscopic detail that is so interesting about these materials. I therefore see great complementary value in the existence of numerical methods such as the discrete element method to study granular materials. I feel like a child. 40 years ago I liked to play shoot marbles with my friends. Nowadays I play with them but using more complex particle shapes using the computer.